In our last tutorial, we finished by adding selection sets to our mass geometry to emit n particles. In this video, we will show how to use display layers, how to add a type object to mash, and modifying geometry with the curve warp. It's now time to tidy up our scene using display layers. These are a more effective way of managing visibility than constantly having to use Ctrl H and Shift H like we have been doing, and are managed through a panel in the channel box down here, display layers. To organize the scene, I'm going to create a display layer for the maker object, such as a dance one dance underscore skin object, a display layer for the studio, and one for the voxel dancer and the end particles. This is all very similar to the layer system in Cinema 4D, although I find the my implementation much less fussy than using layers in Cinema 4D. To create the first display layer, let's select our dance one dance skin object, and I'm going to unhide it using Shift H. I'm going to go to Layers, Create Layer from Selected, and now I can control the visibility of that using the V. So we've got V for Visible, P for Visible During Playback, and if we go here, we've got T for Template Mode. Template Mode is where you can see template objects in the workspace, but you cannot select them. Using the Layers Set Selected Layers with it selected, we can choose what kind of visibility we want from visible through to shaded. Uh, we've got template reference, which is the little R symbol there. Reference is where you can snap to objects in the layer, but you cannot select them or modify them. I'll go back to set selected layers, and we can also have textured, untextured, and there's just a, a wide range of options here. And we can also Double click, set a layer color. I'm just going to rename our layer one to Maker Objects. So in the outliner, I'm going to choose my P cube one for voxels, which is here. We're going to go to Maker Objects and add selected object. Okay, and so we can see that becomes invisible now. And I'm also going to do the same with our MASH2 particle generator repro mesh, Shift H, and in our maker objects, right click, add selected object, that becomes invisible. And now I'm going to make display layers for the rest of our scene. So let's create our P plane one part generator that should also be unhidden. And I'll just add that to our Maker object as well, that's great. And now I'm going to select our voxels and create layer for sel from selected. Rename that mesh voxels, call it yellow, save. I'm going to leave that visible. And now one for our studio, create layer from selected. Studio, Make that blue, save, oh. studio underscore layer, save, ah, I see what I've done with my mash voxels, I've actually added, so I'm just going, I've added my dance one reference bones by mistake, so, what I'm just going to do is, the easiest thing I can do is just delete the layer and let's select my mash one voxels repro mesh and create layer from selected and we'll call this mash voxels oh. there we go. yeah great and I think got studio layer. Let's just make sure. Yeah, I just need one more for our particles. So I've selected my voxel one, cube one object and create layer from selected and call this n particles layer. Right. 
if I actually wanted to add the particles themselves, I can do that. Right click, add selected objects. Great. Okay. So there we are. Now that we have the display layer set up, we can see that it is much easier to navigate and control our scene's visibility. It's now time to create the background text using the display layers and by pressing on the V icon, let's hide all of the existing geometry. So I'm going to switch myself into perspective mode and create some text in either the mash or the polygon shelf. So we're in the mash shelf. Here is the polygon type object. So I'm going to press on it. So I'm going to load some fonts. Just press F to zoom in on our 3D type, which got away from us there. T with our type mesh one object selected, let's go to the type one tab. And here we can see our attributes for our object. Let's change the text from 3D type to get dancing. And let's align to the center. Just Move that over and zoom out so we can see what we're doing. That's better. And dependent on your font library, let's choose a big bold font. In my case, I am going to use the font Impact. So we can see we get previews of all our fonts here. Just find Impact. Oh, just going past it. There we go. Yep, very nice. It is worth just having a look at all the functions that are within the Type 1 tab. There is so much more in here than in the Cinema 4D text tool. For example, if you go into Geometry and Bevels, we have Outer and Inner Type Bevels, and Type Deformation are all available within this one Type 1 tab without having to add extrude objects or deformers as would be needed with Cinema 4D. While the MoGraph MoTeX tool in Cinema 4D does have some of these tools, I prefer Maya's implementation with one type object that can do everything. We can add the type to a mesh network by creating a new empty mesh network. So I'm going to deselect my type mesh one and create a mesh network, mesh three. I'm just going to rename that mesh three type and going to command click with my mesh type selected onto type mesh one. And then I'm going to go to connect mesh to type. And that is now connected. If I go to my mesh type distribute node, you can see that mesh is now working with that type object. So I'm going to just set my distance X back to 20. To animate the text, I'm going to use an audio file to use an audio file with MASH, I'm going to add an audio node. And in the file name, I'm going to use this disco.aif file, which I create in GarageBand and lives in the sound folder of my Maya project. And as you can see, that's just start to distort the type. If you wanted to hear the audio, you can go to File, Import, and Import the sound file, and that adds it to the timeline. And yeah, you can hear the audio. But for what we want, I don't need to hear the audio. The audio is only going to be driving the motion within the types. So I'm just going to right click, sound, and off. And now, yeah, the sound has now left the timeline. So just to refine this somewhat over exuberant dance move, I am going to just reset some values. I'm going to set my position Y to 30, my scale X, Y, and Z to 5. And now if we press play, the type is now moving off the baseline, which is good, but it's still a bit crazy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce my maximum bands to 30. Think of that like a graphic equalizer in terms of reducing the number of bands that are activating against the sound. I'm going to put my filtering to weak, my smoothing to five, my upper threshold. I'm going to move that to 12 so it uses quite a lot of the sound. And yeah, much more subtle, but I definitely prefer that.
Now that we have our type dancing, we can also bend it. To do this, we will use a curve warp. To create a curve warp, draw a spline by going to the Curves Surfaces shelf and press on the EP Create tool. And I'm just going to create four points. Two, three, four. Now I'm going to hit Enter. And we have a new curve here in the outliner called Curve 1. And I'm going to Command and click Tight Mesh 1. And in the Mesh Shelf, I'm going to press on the Curve Warp icon. Ah, that's not working. Now that could be because of our Windows. Let's just check our Plugin Manager first. There we go. Our Curve Warp dot bundle hasn't been activated, so we'll just press on Auto Load and Load. We'll close and we'll run that again. So Curve 1 and Command and Click, Get Dancing, and now there we go. So as you can see, first of all, Curve Warp, when it's working, is great. And if an issue like that does happen where a function isn't working, always check your Plugin Manager first. The easiest way to access the Curve Warp settings by selecting Curve 1 in the Outliner. For some reason I've lost my Node Editor, so let's just go back to my Node Editor. Just redock that. There we go. Let's create a new tab and bring in our input and output connections, and there we go. So let's select our Curve Warp. And I'm going to set the offset here to 0 0.437. And that will center it. And it can control that. And obviously, this could be animated. Change it back to 3.7. OK, great. The great thing about using Curve Warp is that we can adjust or animate Curve 1, as well as adjust the offset position of the Type Mesh 1 to create bespoke animation options. The Type Mesh 1 object is looking a bit stiff. We can adjust this by selecting the Type 1 tab. So let's select our Type Mesh 1 and go to our Type 1 tab. And in the Geometry tab, clicking on Deformable Type. Mesh Settings, Deformable Type. And let's just enable that. This creates geometry across the front of the letters, which makes the text deform according to the curve of the curve warp, and it's much better if you're using your text in any kind of animation and deformer setting. And again, all of this is available directly within the Type 1 tab. I don't think that Impact is working as a font, but the great thing about this MASH setup is that we can go back in our Type 1 tab and change the font. I think for this, I will stick with a simple font I have called Open Sans. There we go. Let's just add a front bevel to this font. And I'm going to just switch it to bold as well. There we go. So let's go down to our bevel. And in the inner bevel drop down. Also just going to switch this to smooth shade all. So in our inner bevel, enable front bevel. And let's select a profile, I think maybe this one. Zoom in. Yeah. No, yeah, this one. And again, these are all adjustable. And I'm going to set the bevel distance to 0.65. There we go. OK, so we are sorted with our dancing type. So making sure we've got a type mesh one object selected in the outliner, just going to assign a new material. So right click, assign new material, Arnold shader, AI standard, 
and we call this AI standard three type. Just going to add this type mesh one object to a new display layer. So layers, create layer from selected type, give that red, save. And I'm going to switch back on the visibility of my other geometry layers. So visible, my end particles and visuals on my mesh voxels and visible on my studio layer. Our type is in the way, but that's okay, because all we need to do, if I just switch myself into wireframe view, is just move our curve one. So I'm gonna use the E key to rotate. There we go. W key to move. Maybe raise it off the ground a bit. And because this is a curve, I can switch. Right click and switch into my control vertex and let's just hide our studio. Right click, control vertex. Just select that one, and we could maybe move that one up. So there's another one. We've got another one there. Rotate. Another one here. I think that'll do us for now. Now let's just switch back on our studio layer. And if we switch back to our camera one, we should now press play. Yep, everything is now animating. We have our voxelized dancer, we have our particles, and we also have our type.